Today we're going to talk about the minimum, maximum, clamp, and saturate nodes. Let's get started. We're talking about these four nodes together today because they're very similar in functionality. They're all designed to limit the range of the input values in some way. They just each do it a little bit differently. When we think about our data in a shader graph, instead of thinking about single values, we often think in terms of ranges or how high and low the values can be. This is because our data can vary quite a bit for each of the pixels, especially if you were using texture maps where some of the pixels are darker and some are light. So this set of nodes, uh, min, max, clamp, and saturate, are designed to limit the ranges of our data. So let's go over them one at a time. At the top here, we have the minimum node. It takes two inputs and returns whichever value is smaller. So if you connect a texture map to the first input here, and then you type a number less than one into the second input port, you can limit how bright the values in the texture are allowed to get. Any of the pixels in the texture that are brighter than the value that you typed in the second port will get replaced by the second port's value instead. So it's kind of like placing an upper limit or a roof on how high the values are allowed to go. Next we have the maximum node. It's sort of like the opposite of minimum. It takes two inputs and returns whichever is greater. So if you connect a texture to the first input port and then type a value into the second port, you can limit how dark the pixels are allowed to get. Any pixels in the texture that are darker than the value that you typed will be replaced by your value instead. So it's like placing a lower limit on the values. Now, this might seem a little counterintuitive that maximum node is placing a lower limit and the minimum node is placing an upper limit. And sometimes it's hard for me to remember which is which, and I have to try one of them and take a look at the result and replace it with the other one because I got it wrong. But that's the nice thing about working with shaders. You can always see the results of what you're doing. But just try to remember that minimum is placing an upper limit and maximum is placing a lower limit. Next, we have the clamp node. It's a bit like combining minimum and maximum together. Notice that it has a port labeled in, and then it has ports labeled min and max. So this allows you to connect your main value to in, and then you can set a upper limit and a lower limit using the min and max ports. So you can control the range of the data coming out. Anything higher or lower will get clamped, as the name of the node suggests. And finally, we have Saturate. Saturate is a special type of clamp. It's designed to only clamp values between a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. So you can't define the minimum and maximum like you can with clamp. Um, so Saturate is always gonna clamp between zero and one. Now you're probably asking, why does the saturate node even exist when I can just use the clamp node and set its minimum to zero and maximum to one and it'll do exactly the same thing? <laughs> well, that's a really good question. I'm glad that you asked. Clamping between zero and one is a really common operation. It's something that you need to do all the time in shaders. And it's also something that the graphics hardware can usually do for free without needing to perform any math operations. So if you need to clamp between zero and one and you use the saturate node to do it, the shader will use the hardware to do it for free. But if you use the clamp node to clamp between zero and one, there's a little bit of an extra cost or some extra math involved that the GPU has to do. So if you need to clamp between zero and one, you should always use the saturate node and if you need to clamp between some other values, uh, you should use the clamp. 
Well, all right, that's enough explaining for now. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. In this first example at the top here, we're taking a look at the minimum node. So I have a texture sample node here, and you can see that I've got a texture with a bunch of polka dots. Uh, the value of the background here is 0.5 gray, and the value of the polka dots is white, or one. So if I pass this into a minimum node, the minimum node is gonna return whichever value is the lowest. And right now I've got a value of one. So anything that's one or lower in my texture is going to be returned and anything that's higher than one is gonna be clamped to one. And so you can see that my result here is the same as the input texture because I'm not actually uh, clamping any of these values down. I'm just setting the, the limit at one and there aren't any values in the texture that are greater than one anyway, so I'm just getting uh, everything that I originally passed in. But if I lower my value, what you're gonna see is that these white pixels here in my polka dots are now being limited to a value of 0.6. So anything above 0.6 is gonna get clamped to 0.6. So you can see that my polka dots are just barely visible here. And if I lower my limit to 0.5, now you can see that my polka dots aren't even visible at all because those values are being limited to 0.5 and the background is also 0.5 and so I'm just getting 100% uh, of the value of 0.5. So the minimum is imposing an upper limit on my texture values and clamping everything down to a maximum of 0.5, which is interesting because the node's called minimum, but if you think about it, it's returning whichever is less or the minimum of the two input values. All right, and then here we have an opposite example where I've got a texture with uh, 0.5 as the background color and then the polka dots are black. And I have a maximum node which is returning whichever value is greater. And my second value here is a zero, so all of the values of the texture are being returned. But if I turn up the value of zero to like 0.2, or let's try 0.1, now you can see that uh, the, the lower limits of the, the values in the texture are being limited. So where these polka dots used to be black, now they're a value of 0.1. And the higher I increase this value, the dimmer these polka dots become because they're being replaced um, by this maximum value here. So if I were to type in a value of 0.5, now those black polka dots are not visible um, because anything lower than 0.5 is getting replaced with 0.5. So that's how minimum and maximum work. We're basically, with minimum, we're imposing an upper bounds on our values and with maximum, we're imposing a lower bounds. All right, let's take a look at an example using our saturate node. And remember, saturate is a way of clamping our values between zero and one. So what do we have in this example? Well, we've got our normal vector and it's set to world space and we're splitting out the Y component of the normal vector. We have our split node here and we've got R, G, B, and A. And so using this G output here of our split is giving us just the Y component of our normal vector. Now, why don't we add a preview node in here and we can take a look at what the result of this split is. So if I wire this out and I take a look at G, here's our preview and you can see that uh, the, the Y component of our normal is the up-facing vector. And so up here at the top of our sphere, because the, the normals are pointing up, we're getting white. And then down here at the bottom of our sphere, uh, because the normals are facing down, we're getting black. Now, what you can't see is that our zero to one values are going from, uh, from one up here at the top to zero here in the middle. And then from the middle down to the bottom, we're actually going to negative one. So this vector goes from one to negative one at the top. 
And that's important. So our ranges are in the range of negative one to one. And so let's just collapse this and get it out of the way here. So here we have two different colors. I have this kind of muddy yellow color and this kind of teal blue color. And we're using the value coming out of our normal vector here uh, to blend between our yellow and our blue. So wherever uh, this value is one, we're gonna get our blue based on our lerp that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And wherever this value is zero, we're gonna get our yellow. And so here you can see that in our preview, if we take a look at this again, we've got white at the top. So we're gonna get our blue color here at the top. And then as we come down our gradient, we're gonna get our yellow color. Well, what happens down here at the bottom? It's actually going into the negative and you can see that we're no longer getting this yellow color that we're putting in. We're actually getting a brighter yellow color. And that's an interesting side effect of what Lerp does. It's actually pushing in the opposite direction of our blue and giving us kind of an unexpected value. What we expect our Lerp to do is to blend between our muddy yellow and our, and our teal blue here, but it's actually giving us this value that isn't either one of these. Uh, it's a new color because our Lerp, uh, our input T value here uh, is not clamped between zero and one. It's going to negative one. And so we're getting a color that's pushed beyond the boundaries that we've set here and it's kind of giving us the opposite of this blue color. Now you may want that, but usually it's it's an unexpected result that we try to avoid. So it's a good idea whenever you pass a value into a lerp node and you know that you only want to get uh, one value if it's zero and the other value if it's one and you want to clamp and not get any other values outside those bounds, it's a good idea to use the trusty saturate node on the, the value that you're using here for the T input or the, the blend value. So you'll notice when I grab uh, my Y component here and wire it into saturate and then use that. Now watch what happens when I connect this saturate node, watch what happens right here to this yellow value. I'm gonna wire this into our T port and you can see that now those values are clamped between uh, one and zero or zero and one. And so we're getting the expected uh, kind of muddy yellow color instead of going all the way into that um, crazy yellow color that we didn't even put in as input. So saturating uh, or using the saturate node here before the lerp node is an important technique for making sure that the behavior of the lerp node is exactly what you're expecting. Okay, so those are our examples that we took a look at in Unity. We took a look at the minimum node, the maximum node, and the saturate node. Let's jump over to Unreal and take a look at these things in that engine. All right, so here we are in Unreal 5, and you can see that I've laid out the same nodes that I had in Unity. I've got our min node, max node, clamp node, and saturate node. So remember that our min node applies an upper limit. Our max node applies a lower limit. Our clamp node allows us to input minimum and maximum, so we can apply an upper and a lower limit. And then our saturate node uh, will clamp between zero and one. So I brought in the same textures here. I have my white polka dots and I have my black polka dots texture. Using the minimum node, if I input a value of 0.5, you can see that my white dots are gone. But if I raise this value to something like 0.7, you can get uh, just a glimpse of the dots. And then uh, as I raise it all the way to one, you're able to get the full range uh, of the texture. So if you want to apply an upper limit, you can use the minimum node and then give it a value somewhere below, somewhere less than one uh, to limit the maximum amount uh, that this texture is allowed to go. Okay, similar with uh, the maximum node, 
Uh, here I have my polka dots that are black, and I'm uh, imposing a lower limit of 0 0.5, so none of the values in the texture are allowed to go lower than 0 0.5 using the maximum. Um, but if I lower this value to something like 0 0.1, now you can see the polka dots here, and uh, but they're, they are limited to 0 0.1, so they don't actually go all the way to black like they do in my original texture map. So again, maximum allows me to impose a lower limit. Minimum allows me to impose an upper limit. And then clamp allows me to impose both. So I can set uh, a maximum and a minimum value for my range that's coming in. And then saturate is gonna clamp between zero and one. So let's take a look at that example over here. Uh, just like in Unity, I have my uh, kind of dirty yellow color and uh, my teal blue color here. And I want to blend between them using my uh, world space normal. And so my world space normal coming out of there is going to look something like this. And if I just use the... And in unreal remember that it's z up so instead of using the y component i have to use this component mask and use the z component or the b notice that i have this b box checked um, so the result of this component mask here is going to give me uh, the up facing value and here at the top it's going to be one here in the middle it's going to be zero and then going down toward the bottom it's going to be negative one and so if I wire the result of my color lerp here, we're blending between our blue value at the top, our yellow value in the middle, and then because this mask is going to negative one, I'm getting this brighter, uh, you can see it a little bit better here, I'm getting this brighter yellow color, kind of a golden yellow, um, because it's pushing away from that blue into negative territory. But if I don't want it, if I don't want that, if I want to limit between my yellow and blue colors here, then I need to use my saturate to ensure that the value going into the lerp doesn't go above one or uh, below zero. And in this case it is, it's going to negative one. So I can use my saturate node uh, and make sure that uh, my values going into this alpha input here of the lerp are clamped between zero and one, then I'll get predictable results. I'll only go to my blue color at one and to my yellow color at zero. And I won't go outside of that range that I've provided. Okay, so there are our examples of using the min, max, clamp, and saturate nodes. So today we learned about limiting the range of your values using min, max, clamp, and saturate. I hope these examples have been useful and that you learned something new. All right, for next week's tutorial, I wanna give you guys a choice. There are two things that we could do. We could either do, uh, we could either talk about the smooth step operation and uh, using smooth step in your shaders, or we could talk about normal blending. We could talk about doing things with normal maps, talk about uh, blending normal maps together and doing detail normal mapping and those things. So let me know in the comments, do you want to do smooth step or do you want to do uh, normals and normal mapping? I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have other ideas that you'd like to hear about in these basic uh, shader tutorials, let me know. And I'll see you in next week's video, everybody. Thanks a lot.